Hey, let's make something. Today, we are modifying a Dollar Tree piece of dollhouse furniture, a chair. You can see there's six pieces in the collection. Mm, they're unfinished wood. They're not great quality. You know, they're a dollar. Uh, they're held together with a lot of glue, but using a heat gun, you can remove that glue. That's what I'm doing here, taking all the pieces apart. It's very sticky. I did have to sand and use an X-Acto knife as well just to get rid of it. Uh, you can see I removed it from all these nice little legs and spindles. I didn't remove it from the base or the back there. I'm not going to use those pieces. That's because the back was very thick, rough wood that just seemed completely out of scale. And the seat I could have repurposed, but it had those holes in the bottom, so I decided not to. Ah, here's another piece that's important. Laser cut chipboard which I think is for scrapbooking. This is also from the Dollar Tree. And another piece from the Dollar Tree, tongue depressor. Uh, I wanted the back of the seat to be very thin because it's going to be padded, as you probably saw in the thumbnail. This chipboard, I really like to use it because it's very easy to cut. And here's an inspiration that I used to design this goth chair. This is a barley twist chair from, I believe, England in the 17th century. But it has these twisted spindles at the sides and at the bottom. That's why it's called barley twist. It's like barley sugar candy. But uh, yeah, I thought it went well with these spindles that we have in this dollar store piece. And this other inspiration. This is a modern goth chair. If you look up like goth furniture or vampire furniture, you'll see things like this. And... It's just all black lacquered plastic or fiberglass or something and padded leather with a tufting. And I really like that. So I kind of combined those two ideas into what I wanted this chair to look like. Oh, now we have L'Elegance toothpicks. Some fancy toothpicks. Uh, a little bit of an indulgence. You know, I like to buy a lot of my things at the dollar store. These are just from a supermarket and I think it was $5 for this container of 250 so kind of steep compared to dollar store things, but I just love those little spindles at the top and I use them all the time. And it's good to dry fit everything together, figure out what you want your shapes to be before you glue it. You can see I cut down the back of the chair because I wanted to add another decorative piece below. So it's all just a process of seeing what you like. And I knew I wanted it, things to be pointy, to seem a little bit dangerous, because I like that in the, that modern goth chair. Another thing they have now at the dollar store, just plain wooden planks, which is great for crafting. Uh, I'll say easy to cut through, because I'm doing it with an X-Acto knife. You see it took me a little, a little bit of effort, but uh, it's about three layers of cheap wood glued together. So it's about half a centimeter thick, I would say. Perfectly serviceable. That's what I'm looking for. It does need to be sanded, of course. Uh, all these rough edges. And then something you'll often see that's the difference between dollhouse furniture that looks like toys and dollhouse furniture that looks like miniatures is beveled edges on wooden things. So like the original chair just had completely flat edges because it was meant to be, you know, cheap, quickly made. But real furniture always has those bevels to make it more comfortable and easy to use for a real person. So just little details like that can make a lot of difference. I decided on making the seat three by three centimeters. It's nice to have a workspace that has that measured out for me. Um, I'm doing this in 1 12th scale. And you see here I am digging out a little sanding drum for my rotary Dremel machine. And I'm just angling those edges, like I said, beveling them at about 45 degrees, which I'm just doing by eye. It's not too tricky. I am wearing a mask if you're worried that I'm breathing in sawdust. I'm not. And yeah, I think that makes such a difference in the finished look. It really makes it look like a chair seat rather than, you know, a, a block of wood in a toy. Also, the nice thing about those barley twist chairs is Every angle on them is straight, so it's much easier to make. Whereas most modern chairs 
have uh, legs that are angled out a little bit, the back's angled back, which is more comfortable to use, but is a lot harder to work with when you're making something. So I didn't angle the back here because I figured it would make it hard to attach the legs. So I've only got the front three sides angled. And then I'm just using toothpicks as the cross braces for the uh, legs, which fit into the holes that were already drilled. The piece came with bamboo skewers in those parts. And I sometimes find bamboo, bamboo is a grass and you know, it's not quite a wood. The fibers are too smooth and that means it doesn't really take stain or paint as well as wood does. So I just replaced it with toothpicks to make it easier on myself. Yeah, most of this is about figuring out how to get it nice and square. Although it's handy that the toothpicks fit right in. Yeah, and you can see, yeah, you can see I'm using the grid to set the glue just before it dries to make sure it's really nice and straight, which worked out very well. I'm dry fitting the back again, trying to figure out exactly how I want it to look, where I want all the pieces to line up. And for the sides, it's trickier because it's the edge of a flat tongue depressor going up against the rounded and uh, shaped edge of these spindles. So I used tacky glue, just a white craft glue, because I knew it would sort of fill in the gaps a little bit. I would have loved to have decorations on both sides around the back, but I thought I would then not give myself enough space to put the padding. So I decided not to do that here, although that would have been great. And now I'm just uh, base coating everything with a layer of mostly Mod Podge with a little bit of black acrylic paint added. And Mod Podge is a glue and a sealant for a surface. So it's great as a first layer on crafts. And because it dries clear, if you put just a little bit of colored paint into it, it really takes on that color very well. So that's a good base coat. Then off camera, I added another coat of just black acrylic paint and then two coats of a clear acrylic gloss because I wanted it to be super shiny, like, like that uh, modern goth chair that we saw at the beginning there. And now it's time to add some padding to it. This is, I pre-cut some cushions. I just eyeballed them a little bit smaller than the spaces and they are from a cheapo kitchen sponge. You can see I sliced off a little bit of that super fine texture, like a magic eraser sponge. Although this is a knockoff brand. And then for the backing, I wanted something firm, but not too stiff or bulky. And it's just some scrap cardboard. This is from the edge of a package of Gorilla Glue but you could use cereal box, anything like that. And then I am eyeballing some holes that I'm gonna poke for the tufting. If you're not familiar with that term, that's an upholstery method where you pull a button through the front of a uh, padded fabric. So it pulls it in, makes that little dimple, which I think looks so nice and finished on the furniture. And the fabric that I am going to use is this purple velvet, not real velvet. It's uh, something I bought on Amazon that's supposed to be like stickers that you use to line jewelry boxes if you make jewelry boxes. It's very handy for miniature so because it has a, a very fine texture and it's very thin, whereas real velvet fabric would be quite a bit thicker. So I've cut out the shapes for the coverings. I added a little bit of a seam allowance and I'm going to trim the corners. Yep, you can see I've clipped out a little triangle from the corners and then carefully I'm sticking them down to the sticky surface with that backing removed. And it worked out pretty well. I think I could have given myself more of a seam allowance. I knew I was gonna squish down the edges and pull it over, which I do. 
and it works okay but it started to pull up a little bit and I think with just a little more seam allowance I could have avoided that but it's not too bad so I did I stuck it down there for all four sides and then all four sides on the bigger cushion I'm trying it out and I like this kind of rounded I think that would be pretty good for another style of chair, but I wanted to go the extra mile and add that tufting. One thing you'll notice here is because of that glue backing, the corners where you can see the backing come through, you get that little white line. And I don't want that to draw the eye, so I'm doing a uh, quick and dirty fix, which is just taking a purple pen and getting rid of that white line. So you'd still see the edge if you look close, but it doesn't draw the eye in the same way. So I think it works pretty well. You could of course very carefully cut and fold every corner of your velvet and then you wouldn't have this kind of problem, but who has the time for that, right? And now I'm doing the tufting. Uh, I didn't have any purple embroidery floss that would match the purple of the velvet, so I figured instead of being close but wrong, I would just go with black so it just looked totally different. If you see it, it's just a different look altogether. And I'm gluing down the end with a super glue. I don't really want to put a knot back there because that will make the back uh, not quite as flat, and I do want it to stay flat. And all I'm doing is pulling it through that hole that I made in the back, uh, moving the thread over maybe a millimeter on the front, hardly any at all, but just enough so it can grip onto the fabric, and then pulling it back through that same hole and pulling it tight. And it's hard with uh, embroidery floss and a needle to get it through. That's why I'm using pliers to help pull it through sometimes. But I think it worked out very well. It was hard with the last bit of thread to make sure the tension would be good, so I pulled that through, pulled it tight, and then held it in place while I put super glue over it and let that dry before trimming the end of the thread. But I'm pretty happy with it. I did four little holes on the top one, and then for the bottom cushion I did five, so four around the corners and then one in the middle. And I think it worked out great. It's a little hard to see on camera, but in person you can really see how it's dimpled all over. And then I'm attaching it with more of that craft glue. Yeah, you can kind of see the dimples there. And I like how shiny all the wood came out. And I'm using another special from the Dollar Tree, some craft clamps. I just wanted to make sure it really stuck down well all over because I didn't want it to pull up at all at the corners. And like I was saying, I did made this at 1 12th scale, which means one inch in the miniature is one foot in real life. So I measured a kitchen chair I have that was about three feet tall. So this chair is a little over three inches tall. And I think the proportions came out pretty well. It looks like it could be a real chair to me. You gotta get everything clamped, clamped all the way up. And now let's see how it looks when the glue dries. Here it is, hooray. I love this tufting. I think that looks so cool. And I'm excited to use that in future projects. Speaking of which, I'm hoping to modify some more of this uh, Dollar Tree furniture into a goth furniture before Halloween. So I hope you will check back. And thank you very much for watching. I will leave you with a look at a finished chair.